Ryan Dawes, thank you so much, sir, for your support. We appreciate it. Once you transition to the Western Michigan game, what challenges do the ponies pose? Well, they did a whole lot of challenges uh, up at Camp Randall Stadium. That was a good ball game. They had a one-point lead in the fourth quarter and uh, were utterly confusing Tyler Van Dyke, although other teams mm. have been able to accomplish that mm. as well. So I, I saw the majority of that game, and, um, yeah, they were playing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wisconsin and were benefited, the Badgers, by a muffed punt or yep. a ball that kicked off a Western Michigan player that led to the game leading drive. Otherwise, Wisconsin would have been in deep, deep crap there midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah, I kind of skimmed that game. And I can't decide whether it was bad Wisconsin football or great Western Michigan football. But, uh, you know, in the first half of that game, uh, I think Wisconsin may have scored – the first touchdown, I don't know, it was seven to nothing. I don't know. And Western Michigan had the ball for like seven minutes. And it went from like 10 minutes in the second quarter down to three minutes in the second quarter, I think. And the drive was 16 plays and 78 yards. And uh, it was almost entirely on the ground. And their 1,000 yard rusher from last year, Jalen Buckley, who does go about 215, 220 pounds. Uh, he punched it in from the one-yard line. They did something really exotic. They ran right at them at the one-yard line and scored a touchdown. And so, uh, you know, again, I think Wisconsin this year, uh, as I kind of joked, watching, watching them play against Western Michigan, this Luke Fickle rain at Wisconsin just settle in. They're going to finish anywhere from – sixth to 12th in the big 10 every year and probably go bowling in uh, Tampa or I don't even know what the down the line bowl tie ins anymore. Cause Ohio state never goes to any of these games. So I've lost track of where all these bowl games are, but Tampa Jacksonville, if that's still one of them, uh, the other Orlando bowl, if that's still one of them, uh, Houston, the, the Texas bowl, I don't know. They're they're gonna. You get the idea. They're they're gonna finish anywhere from sixth to twelfth in the Big Ten every year, and that's probably about where they're gonna be this year. So, uh, you know, I think it's a step up from Akron, but again, they're four and eight last year. Lance Taylor, second year as the head coach. Uh, the coverage over the weekend, I think it was on Big Ten Network, mentioned that or FS1, I think, mentioned that he had coached under. Get a load of this list. Nick Saban, Rex Ryan, David Shaw, who did have a little bit of success at Stanford, Ron Rivera, and Brian Kelly. So this guy has been uh, under a lot of pretty good uh, coaches, played wide receiver at Alabama as well in the early 2000s. So uh, kind of interesting there. Hayden Wolf, their quarterback, he's about a 65% guy last year and uh, didn't do a whole lot in this first game against uh, Wisconsin, but, uh, you know, they're going to come in. They've already played at Camp Randall Stadium, so they know all about raucous environments. They will not be uh, awed by what they see at Ohio Stadium, I wouldn't think. Yeah, I think it's really good for Ohio State that they saw Western Michigan play this game against Wisconsin, not just for the film, but to see the fight that Wisconsin was in. And I know there's a lot of respect for Wisconsin's program and in a, in the Woody. So to see uh, for the players to see that is good. And uh, for Western Michigan to have done it, I, I think is poor is, is bad, you know, bad for them in this game because Ohio state will be, uh, will be awake and ready for this one, especially with the, the, the focus on starting fast. That's what Ryan day, that's what Chip Kelly have talked about offensively. So I think you could see, um, a team that uh, an Ohio State team that is taking this game very seriously is also taking themselves very seriously and getting an early start, which I think both will be bad news for Western Michigan in this one. But they're uh, I think they're one of the the you know four or five best teams in the MAC, which means they could win it or finish 500. Just you know the, the, just because, but they do have a very good running back. They've got some pieces here and there, and uh, they they can make plays. What I liked about the Ohio State one of the things I liked about the Ohio State defense is last week they were starting new linebackers. You've got um, 
veterans all around them. But then you have Akron out there throwing throwing all kinds of stuff, misdirection, crap against the wall, playing two quarterbacks at the same time, trying to get some trick plays in, and really none of those hit big. So I think you see a disciplined, focused Ohio State defense and a Western Michigan offense that knows it's not going to go well, but they're going to try to do what they can do. And I, I'm not foreseeing a 28-14 game in this one. My Phil Steele book tells me that the only prior meeting between Ohio State and Western Michigan was in 2015. That was the third year of the P.J. Fleck regime. At 38-12? 38 to 12 was the final score. Ohio State was a 32 and a half point favorite that day. Uh, Western Michigan trailed 24 to six at halftime. And that team was eight and five that year, Western Michigan. It was the year before uh, they won the Mid American Conference and were 13 and 0 in the regular season and played Wisconsin in the bowl game and, and gave Wisconsin a really good game uh, in the bowl game. Uh, it was one of the uh, New Year's Six Bowl games, maybe in the Cotton Bowl. So um, I don't think this Western Michigan team is as good as that Western Michigan team was. And Ohio State was number one in the country at that point, coming off uh, winning the national championship the year before. We know that that 2015 Ohio State team only ended up with, what, one loss uh, along the way to Michigan State was a really good team, although they didn't fulfill – their destiny of repeating as national champions. So kind of a, a similar situation here with Ohio State this year, a really good Ohio State team, and uh, just kind of a middle-of-the-road Mid-American Conference Western Michigan team that, you know, might get to 6-6 six and six this year after winning four games last year. It was one of the sleepwalking games of 2015. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That thing went sideways from the beginning. They had them – play, what was it, Virginia Tech on a Monday night and then expected them, a, a, a freaking college team to come back on five days and play Hawaii, you know, the following Saturday as if, you know, they're the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, play, playing Sunday, Thursday. <laughs> it's like, no, they're really good, but <laughs> they ain't a college team that good. Sorry. And I think that uh, – you know, as as it, as Michael says in that documentary, and I took that personally, you know, that they kind of took for granted that they're all just machines. And uh, boy, oh boy, did they. Uh, Party machines. Ohio State laid an egg that year. Let's just say that. I mean, you've got guys a combined over 100 years in the NFL, you know, uh, with all the guys off that team. And they didn't do any better than they did in 2015. So. Well, we know that Jeremiah Smith's going to score two touchdowns Saturday because that's just what he does, right? Yeah, the it, touchdown maker. He was he was one one dropped catch and two yards away from a four touchdown game in his debut because that that exactly. first that first one was gone. It was open and uh, blocked perfectly. Yeah, there, you saw the his house. You saw the tunnel for the tunnel screen, and there was a huge lane going, and he saw it as well, and. That was going to be huge. He could have run the chill of coffee. <laughs> he would have just kept going right out the tunnel, right out. The <laughs> uh, right, but and then you know the the deep pass, you know, falls like two yards short. A one handed grab when he's being held, his right arm is being held, and he catches it in his off arm. And we've seen him do stuff like that all throughout spring and fall camp. And I here, what what is this? This is this the baseline now? This is the expectation that people have. And the thing is. I don't think it's out of line. Like, yes, I, this, he's not going to have two touchdowns and 96 yards receiving every day. Um, you know, Marv didn't do that. Marv opened a season with two catches last year and, you know, a couple of games with just three catches. So you can't, you can't expect this every week, but you can't expect it any week and you can expect more any week. And yeah, I, well, Whatever you think your expectations are, you go ahead and lift, lift them up up a little higher. Just don't don't be upset if it doesn't happen every single week because there will be weeks where your high expectations are actually exceeded as well. Well said. He um, certainly fulfilled uh, what uh, people had expected for this game, despite the first play dropsy there. 